Hey guys, welcome back to my intro tutorial. Well, this isn't really like a full intro tutorial. This is only like a preview panel, like a Clip Maker 3 tutorial. And basically, what I want to show you how to do is basically how to make this, like have shine and stuff, like basically my effects tutorial. But it's like for preview Panzoid for Clip Maker 3. So uh, this is Clip Maker 2 right here, and this is because this is how you're going to import like templates and stuff into preview Panzoid. And basically, what you're going to do is you're just going to take. I'm just going to take this raw, like that bar is made because it's like literally the best thing ever to be made on Earth. So you take that, you go up here to where the URL is, and instead of typing in tools, you're going to type in. You're going to replace this with preview. And also make sure you're logged in because it will not work if you're logged in. Like it'll just show Clipmaker 2. But here we go. Now we are successfully in the Clipmaker 3. So just wait a little bit. So as you see, it's now loading everything. And you will be met with a scene and, and an audio. And this pretty confusing UI at first. Like it's not confusing for me since I use After Effects. It's more After Effects like basically. So over, yeah, you, if you know how to use Panzoid, then you know exactly what this is. But I mean, maybe you don't. But anyways, here you go. So you can just like press it and stuff, press works, and then we're gonna select this if you want to keep replaying all over itself. So let me just get over the UI, like the new basic things that are in uh, Clipmaker 3. So the first thing would have to be that the scenes thing is probably the most confusing to get over of. But basically a scene is basically like one clip is like a kind of like a copy of Clipmaker 2. So Clipmaker 2 is kind of like basically would be like one scene, and you can just layer these scenes on top of each other. Kind of like layers so if i take this and then click hold alt and then drag it it duplicates the scene so i basically kind of made like two clip maker twos inside of it so now look there's one right here and then there's one right here but these both have the same contents like they both contain their own effects so if i add an effect like a negative to this one yeah it's not going to affect the effects of the bottom one so that's basically like the basics of like how scenes work so if i add like a Let's see what would be good. If I add like a cool, or if I add a shutter and then make that shutter color like red. And yes, yeah, see, look, this shutter text should not be going over shutter in regular Clipmaker 2, but it does because this shutter isn't in the top scene. This, like the red shutter, isn't, it's like instead it's playing the, the, like, the second scene over the top, over the bottom scene. And this is can be used for some really, really cool stuff. So the first thing I'm going to teach you how to do is the shine. And the shine is like the best part, like the top perk that you're going to want to use. And basically what you're just going to have, want to do is just add a radial blur. Like all you want to do is just add a radial blur. And that's pretty much it. You're pretty much set. And you kind of have like a cool shine, but I'm going to add some things that, that will make it even better. So there you go. That's That looks pretty cool so far. But... First things first, I'm gonna before I get into the more shine stuff, I'm gonna go to scene, to the top scene, and I'm gonna add bloom. But this bloom isn't gonna be like a glow. I'm not gonna use this bloom as a glow. I'm gonna use it as a shadow, basically, like a drop shadow. Well, that kind of looks pretty cool, but I'm just gonna keep it as a drop shadow for now because I'll get to CC and stuff later. So set the now, as you can tell now, like the layout is a lot more different than it is in um, Clipmaker 2. Like as you can tell, they it's everything's more compact and and it's just like After Effects where if you want to add a keyframe to to a value, you're just gonna have to click the clock and that will turn it red and then green and stuff, which is pretty cool. It is a little bit slower, but it's something to get used to. Like also, like it's slower to drag, so you just want to use numerals and just type in. So I just set the threshold to zero. So it's yeah, if you know how to use Bloom, then yeah, you know what that does. So now that you have that all affected, it's going to add like a really cool shadow thing. I'm going to set this to 2, and I'm going to set the radius to 0 is the most important part. Or, yeah, that's actually effect. Let's just set strength to 1. And now you have this pretty cool shadow thing that looks to And the reason why you're going to want this is later, like you'll see, like if you remove the bloom, it will like not make the text stand out. So now the text is like standing out and stuff, you're going to want to go to the bottom and add grayscale to the shine to the radial blur and now that you have that uh the next step is to add a gosh gaussian blur but before you add a gaussian blur you're gonna yeah you yeah, just add gaussian blur 
And now if you look, it's a little bit smoother, but so just lower it until you got to like a nice little threshold and boom, now you have like a, so that looks really good so far. You might also want to adjust the weight of it to make it a little bit brighter so it, so it pops. Oh, and that looks really good by itself. That itself is like, that itself is an above average intro in Panzoid already. So next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to learn how to change the color. And since I, the reason why I set a grayscale over it is so, to make it white. So I can go into, one use one of the new effects which is color grading. And color grading basically allows you to change like the colors of stuff. Like the color, like it can, it allows you to change the color of shadows, midtones, and highlights. I usually use the highlights for this so that you can change the color. Like that looks really, really nice. So now that you have that, like that's your shine and stuff. That looks amazing. Like that's, I used to dream about this when I was 11 years old. Like I used to literally have dreams that Panzoid got this. Don't ask, I was a weird kid. Uh, you might want to lower the weight a little to make it a little like stuff, but that's all personal preference. So now that you have that, what you're going to want to add is an overlay. Now, one of the confusing things is, if you add a radial blur to a scene, it makes it not transparent anymore. So if I go to the top scene and then add a radial blur, you should see that the bottom one disappears because... Like, so that, at first I was really confused because you can't use that in like a scene. So it was really hard to make CCs and stuff, my, so my preview pans of intros used to come out really dark. But since they fixed the adjustment layers, which I'll get to, which, oh yeah, that's also a new feature, adjustment layers, which are totally amazing. Uh, let me just go back to the bottom scene so we can adjust this some more. So now that you have that, uh, I'm actually going to lower the Gaussian and blur just a little. There we go. So now what you're going to want to add is an overlay, and overlays also make it non-transparent, which is why we keep the shine at the bottom. So go into overlay, and then go into my pack in the Lightning Boy pack v2, and go... Actually, I can't say v2, but just go into any overlay pack, and they should have TV scan lines, which is basically what we're going to add to make like the cool like effect to it. Then select subtract, and there we go. So now it has this cool effect to the shine to make it like black and stuff, and this is like one of my favorite things ever, because I think that looks like really, really good. Well, you could lower the delta if you want, but usually I don't lower the delta. Usually when I do try to make it like smaller, I just adjust the weight. Oh uh, yeah, that looks sweet like that is perfect like right there i wouldn't say it's perfect but i would say that it's just, like really really good for tutorial purposes and you can you can even set to that even though that doesn't really look that good it doesn't really look like shine anymore but next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add a wave over here wavy put that underneath the overlay and then add the mount. lower the mount a little like to that and then add den like turn up the density to like 30 or something And this is like the equivalent to a turbulent displace in After Effects, if you know what that is. So that basically is just going to make it look look really cool, like kind of like a... Like really cool, I don't know really what else to say about it. It just makes it look like kind of like the After Effects in Trosish, I don't know. I, you may want to lower the amount a little. And turn, like you can adjust the time as well. Like time, like depending on what time you want it to look like really, like pretty good, like that. You may want to adjust it. It's up to you. That's all personal preference. I usually just adjust it to something like there is no set thing. I'm just telling you how to make a shine, like to get the basics or preview panzoid. Actually, yeah, next adjustment layers. So you go over here, you go back over here, and this is like the new thing. This is the new layout, and I think it's pretty cool. You can search your media and stuff, like your project media. And basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to click adjustment, you're going to drag it over here, and there, boom, you go. Now, this is a lot similar to a video editor, to a Panzoid video editor, and basically you just drag it out like a scene, like you would a video in video editor. So that's, if you're familiar with video editor, then there you go. So now that you have an adjustment layer, you can like go into the edit. Now this is the new edits tab. Like, so you can actually edit scenes, stuff like scale and stuff. And basically what's the pro the problem is, if you do that, like, hey, the second scale is also moving up. To fix that, you're gonna wanna hold alt and do that. And, but then when you adjust this, it, it locks, which is pretty bad, so you're going to want to click Alt again, and then click on it, and then boom, there you go. So now it's reset. And then they have opacity too, so you can lower the opacity and rotation of the adjustment layer, which is good if you want to add like this really cool thing like this, like with the ghost, I would say, I would, I call it a ghost. And that's really cool, like that's also a really cool effect if you want that, if you're kind of into that. 
And there you go. But I'm going to teach you how to do the effects first, like the... I'm not going to go over particles because that's pretty simple to use. Because particles currently don't work in Preview Panzoid because this is just a really early build. So next thing I'm going to go over is some of the new features like the mat, like the CC and stuff. So you're going to want to go into Radial Blur, turn down the Delta, and this is where you can get like the shine and stuff, like the CC. Like this is where you use Radial Blur on the text. Then I'm going to add a Shutter because shutters are hot, like my abs. The next I'd, I'd consider using a color adjustment so that it stands out from... There we go. Okay, so I guess that's kind of it. So set the angle to 26.7. Okay, so now you're going to want to select the color eyes to whatever color you want. I'm just going to select purple because purple is dope. And that's pretty good. So now you're going to want to select overlay and then add a visionette. I don't know how you say that, but... Now it looks pretty snazzy. Uh, but I will cover smoke. Next thing I'm going to want to do is smoke because this actually affects the CC a lot. So basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take this and you're going to want to drag up adjustment and then drag up one of those scenes and then multiply this scene. So click hold alt and then drag the top scene to lower bottom and then it should duplicate it. And now what you want to do is you want to take this. You want to go to camera, you want to select the text, and you want to delete the text. Oh yeah, also delete the wires, or whatever. And then this is a, like a, what's it called, 300. This is a smoke layer. This is not a text layer. So we're going to delete whatever text is in here, and then replace it with my smoke. I, and you can go into my, like if you have my pack downloaded, you can go into my pack, or just Google. Uh, smoke PNG and it should come up with something like this there you go and now you have a super snazzy smoke so now that you have that you're going to want to move on to CC now that you've made it all bright and stuff and you like it how it is and the CC is basically going to be like you could consider this as a CC if you really really want to I wouldn't though because th there's still some more things that you're going to want to do so this by itself looks extremely good. No, I mean, I wouldn't say extremely, but what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add a color grading and go to shadows and select blue and then lower it over here. Oh, that looks terrible. So you're going to want to drag that underneath the shutter. So now that it's kind of like bluish or I guess purple in this case, you're going to want to drag this in here. There we go, and now you're basically going to try to make it so that the background is kind of blue, so you're going to want to make it slightly and slightly. Maybe I shouldn't have chosen purple. There you go. So now, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm not going to select purple. I'm going to choose something that stands out a little bit more. Red or something, because that's a little bit better. Because it, it helps define the blue in the background. So what you're going to want to do next is add a shutter, and then 0 0.5 as the cover, and then lower... Set that color to white, add that underneath the radial blur, and there you go, and then just lower the opacity. If I can find it, there we go. And just lower the opacity. This kind of brightens things up a little bit, so that you can see the smoke in the background. Masking, also just drag this up a little bit, because it does, preview panzoid is just a build, so it gets pretty laggy. So then do, do that, and this looks pretty good. I will have to say that I will, like, make edits to stuff, it kind of is just more about playing around stuff, so the adds, I'm going to adjust the weight a little bit, and I'm going to lower the opacity of the particles in the background. Or not particles, but smoke, so that you can see the thing. Since the shine is underneath the smoke, it doesn't really work really well, it doesn't work super well with it, because look, it kind of like blocks out a little bit of the smoke. That's just a little side effect. You can lower this to whatever you like. I'm just going to lower it to like something where it doesn't really affect the smoke at all. So I'm just going to lower it to like that. Like that looks good because now that it doesn't affect the, the shine, that's what really matters. And then you're going to want to go over here back to the adjustment layer and the opacity a little bit of this shutter. There you go. So the shutter, like the smoke is very... I, I don't know what to say about that. I want to say that it's like more subtle. That's pretty good. This looks like, this legit looks super good. 
Next I want to cover is masks. Masks are the best part of this new update because you can add stuff like radial blur, like radial Gaussian blur, which is pretty good. So um, just go over here, adjustment, and then add a mask. And then what I'm going to add next is a Gaussian blur. So now that the mask is over the Gaussian blur, I'm going to click invert. And basically what a mask does is it hides like the it hides the like effects that's on that's like above it or under it I can't really I don't remember which one it is but basically that hides that so you can lower the opacity of the Gaussian blur to make this like a little bit well cool. and this looks really cool because it looks like a really good nice little camera effect I would say then just up in the size of the uh, what's it called the mask and if you look in like really closely in the background like this is really subtle but it looks really nice like just the blur in the background I would lower the opacity of the Gaussian blur just a little and there you go in that little area and now you have like this super subtle but really cool like radial blur which looks super good by the way and next on the mask thing I'm gonna add a you can also add pixelated I've never tried that before but you can only have some of it pixelated which kind of looks cool I wouldn't really know why you would want that but I guess if you want to Basically, you can add like any effects, like you can add grayscale, and that looks pretty cool, if I'm going to be honest. That's really cool, actually. Adjust that. If you really wanted to, like, there, this has, in, the mask has like lots of infinite possibilities, but for this specific tutorial, I'm just going to focus on stuff, like you can change, you can make like gradients with this. Like blue. Wow, I never really thought you could do that. So. Yeah, you can kind of make like gradients and stuff. Now that's pretty sweet by itself. All right, but next what you're going to want to do to add to this, you're going to want to select RGB shift. That way it only like the RGB shift this is a pretty common effect used within like After Effects plus C4D intros where like if you go and look around, you will see like just a little tiny bit of uh, what's called RGB shift like over here, like it's pretty subtle, but it looks really good when it's just playing and stuff. You can obviously go over some more things like this mask. I would recommend though creating a new adjustment layer for every single mask. So I'm going to make another adjustment layer for the last thing I want to cover, which is going to be shake. Now they added shake as an effect now. So you can have sh like shake uh, affecting your shutters if you want. So let's go to effect and then add shake, which is should be down here. There we go, shake. And this basically has the same, like this is literally the same thing as the shake on the camera. And one of the cool, I would lower the zoom to zero and then change the smooth to zero, 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 zero. That way, like the smooth is what makes it like super smooth and stuff, but that's more just like a really, really slight Gaussian blur. I don't know how to say Gaussian blur, please don't blur, bully me. So next you want to go to speed, you just change, I would change the speed to like 10 or whatever. But don't, seriously, don't trust me on my shakes. I'm terrible. I'm terrible at shakes, so I would not take any advice from me on shakes. And there you go. That's pretty much it. That is basically all I want to cover in this. Um, yeah. And to open a to open a project, you would just do Control and then O, and then select the project file. And currently, you can't save project files with Preview Panzoid, but you can open them. You can open ClipMaker 2 project files but you can't save as ClipMaker 2 project files. So ClipMaker 2, if I was able to upload this or save it, it would not be supported by ClipMaker 2, obviously. But yeah, so that's basically it. That's all I wanted to cover. And yeah, go have a nice long day. Enjoy like this awesome CC tutorial slash like shine tutorial. I think it looks really, really good. So yeah, subscribe if you want to. Uh, subscribe to see more intros in the like in the future and yeah. You know.